Hey guys, what's going on? In it is this time again. It's the earnings season, week one. Uh, we're going to break down some of the correlations, some of the companies that are going to be reporting these earnings. And honestly, uh, it is quite of an uh, unusual week one. Normally, we see this many on week two. Uh, so, ton of companies are reporting this week. It's absolutely impossible, guys, to put all of them on here. But uh, we're going to glance at uh, what we believe are going to be some of the best shots, either on the call side or the put side. So. With that, let's get going. Today is Monday the 22nd, and uh, Zion BOH, their representation uh, of regional banks, and uh, as much fear has been going on in these regional banks, they're not dropping. They're actually uh, making a move higher today uh, that sets the stage uh, for overall uh, positive finish of the day today on Monday the 22nd of April 2024. But there's two companies that are reporting after earnings. Uh, we're going to glance at the chart of them uh, right now. So one of them is uh, PKG. Uh, and this stock actually had a pretty decent run. And uh, right now, it could be the moment some of the market participants could be buying the dip. So normally, this one, however, does move a ton during the earnings. So this is not going to be your best earnings play but uh, there is some evidence that this stock could actually squeeze a bounce here so we would not be buying puts or calls on this one guys ahead of the earnings report but this could be a decent trade uh tomorrow so the next one uh on the list is going to be medp now the chart on this one looks interesting medp let's glance at that real quick medp guys pretty solid top information guys uh, but remember, it had some strong volume going into here. The question is, will they unwind this volume after hours today? And I think the answer is yes. Based on the charts, this stock could drop uh, for multiple reasons. So with that said, uh, this one we're expecting a bearish move on. Uh, next one on the list uh, for tomorrow, uh, GE Aerospace. Uh, we have a lot of companies tomorrow that are defense companies such as LMT, RTX, uh, Ryder. All of these are defense related and we're bullish on those. As a matter of fact, uh, if you were in a pain member group alert uh, last week, we have sent out an alert to start buying calls on LMT when it was like $30 below current level, uh, RTX, uh, and uh, NOC was another big one. Uh, NOC is not reporting tomorrow, but it is reporting uh, when Thursday, right here, we got it on the list. Out of all this defense names, LMT, RTX, and ticker R, uh, NOC seems to move the most at the present time as far as your daily fluctuations. So this one could catch you the best trade on directional weekly options simply because it is moving a lot more. So when it comes to strike selection on LMT, you can go 10, 20 points out of the money because that's the kind of move it normally makes around earnings. Uh, so uh, we're going to review the chart in just a second. But GE is kind of in the same category GE Aerospace. So let's take a look um, at the chart of GE here. I mean, there's definitely signs of breakage here on G. On G, guys, we would go bearish. Uh, MACDs are already crossed. So we can get a decent size drop. Again, something to consider when you're selecting strikes. I mean, this stock's got history of very small moves, even around earnings. So this is not something you want to be going in buying like a 130 strike put or 100, not even 140 strike put. On some of these things that barely move, you want to go straight, very close to the money. There's not a ton of meat on the bone, but how much can this move? Plus, minus, uh, you know, five, seven points probably would be at the most, right? Compared to something like this, which would be a much better trade. Uh, on LMT. LMT was a huge trade for us last earnings uh, season, which basically we caught this move on LMT, guys. Uh, this trade paid, I think 40X, 50X, I can't remember right now, it might have been an 80X right here, because initially after the earnings report last time, it bounced and we were buying put options while it was bouncing the morning after the earnings report. Now, in this particular case, uh, the situation could be different. I mean, what was driving the stock lower and at the same moment temp temporarily oil prices lower was possibility of a de-escalation. Well, right now we got exactly the opposite. That's why we sent out the alert last week to start buying LMT calls. And I think in this case, 
there is a decent probability that LMT is actually going to move to the upside. You're going to find out tomorrow, but generally speaking, uh, just keep in mind, a lot of the moves in LMT, they will reverse. So ideally, if you are bullish on it, what you want to do is first see a move lower pre-market. And by the time the market opens up, it could actually uh, skyrocket to a level of 470, 480. So we're very bullish on this, especially if it makes the initial, especially if the initial reaction is lower. You got to be careful with the stock if the initial reaction is higher, because a lot of times, the momentum to the upside will be unwinded throughout the trading session. That's how we're able to nail killer, killer trade on, on this biggest candle on this chart. But there is a chance, okay, that we could get this sort of candle, but to the upside tomorrow. So uh, if you want to make sure you get this trade perfectly, uh, the best way to do it is trade with the 30 Market Moves Coach and not necessarily pull the trigger on this trade until after the report uh, report tomorrow morning so wait till 9 30 to trade this and depending on whether the initial reaction is you're going to be able to position yourself better and probably buy options as a slightly better price and then where they are today but overall if you were to make a directional bet on this uh, you're much better off going with the call side uh despite of how bearish this part of the chart uh looked so uh, there clearly Interesting that last time we were shorting this stock at this level uh, right before this happened. And now, very similar setup, but we're going bullish uh, because we think, guys, it makes sense. Any defense stock is going to uh, outperform right now. Again, sometimes what makes sense doesn't make you money. Uh, but what we're, when we look at the chart and the chart components uh, and the volume that's been going in, all the volume recently, uh, these these bars right here that I have on my chart, guys, they are uh, volume uh, weighted. So they represent uh, the biggest volume is going to the upside. So people are definitely buying uh, the MACD crossed recently from bearish to bullish. It's got a golden cross on MACD. And uh, there's a lot of people that could still come in and push the stock higher. Uh, it wouldn't be a shocker if by next week LMT traded at maybe uh, 500 plus. So. Uh, with that said, uh, let's look at the next one on the list here. So uh, Spotify uh, is an interesting trade. Uh, recently, Spotify had a pretty good run, but they've been unwinding. So this was the good run that it had, and this is the unwind on the, on the run. Uh, honestly, we believe this stock is going to drop. It's got a lot of bearish things going on. The volume has been uh, highly bearish. Um, and a lot of crosses on the 8 and the 13 line and the 21 and it can bounce out of it. Guys, there is a great probability this one is going to drop. Now, when we say this one is going to drop, again, the way you want to trade something, sometimes the initial reaction higher will resolve in a drop by the end of the day. So the way we trade here at Third Chain Market Moves, guys, you know, we don't jump in and out every fucking five minutes. That's not a way to make any decent money as a trader, okay? You want to focus on the overall move. So if you wake up tomorrow and like Spotify is up, okay, well, this is the greatest moment to actually buy puts. While well, most of the people, what are they going to be doing? Clearly, they're going to be buying calls. So if Spotify jumps tomorrow on light volume, what is your action? You buy puts especially if the volume is really light, especially if it coincides with like a level of uh, 300, 310, uh, because it's not gonna be able to break above that, guys. That's just the bottom line. So if you get lucky with a perfect entry around this level, I mean, that's a sure thing. That's a sure trade. And so um, if you're looking for that, it would make sense to buy puts ahead of the earnings report. Let's see if by a miracle uh, of gods of trading, we can get a bounce first on light volume because that would make you a lot more money instead of just shorting it now. But if you were to take a directional bet, uh, it would make sense to go with puts rather than calls overall on Spotify based off the chart. Uh, the next uh, a few stocks, uh, RTX and R, basically similar as LMT guys, okay? Especially uh, Ray this one right here, RTX, uh, Raytheon, uh, RTX, let's pull it up. Something you should know about this one. Uh, the chart looks perfect for a breakout. Actually, this one looks like the chart of uh, uh, move to meme coin. Okay, uh, it's basically it's the same, right? 
It pumps and consolidates. It pumps, uh, consolidates, pumps, uh, consolidates. So they're gonna pump it, okay? And the greatest advertising for RTX guys is uh, uh, Israel recently. So it, the way Israel was able to deflect the attack by Iran by utilizing the defense system that RTX makes. So uh, it was great promotion by Israel for RTX when uh, they were basically able to destroy all 300 missiles uh, or drones that were trying to attack Israel in not so distant past over the last couple of weeks. And so uh, this stock is destined for a breakout. You don't want to short this. If it dips, you buy it. Uh, this stock is in a solid, massive uptrend. And so one thing you should know about it, it's not LMT. It's not gonna go up $20 in one day. It's not gonna drop $20 in one day. The daily trading range in this stock historically is moderate. The biggest move ever it had in a long time was during the last earnings report, which was exactly the opposite of what LMT did. They had some really strong numbers. And you should know that after the initial move, to the upside, it sold off a little bit, and that was it. So based off this history, on this one, you would want to go and buy it ahead of the earnings report because normally what's gonna happen, the biggest part of the move is gonna come after the earnings report to the upside, and then during the regular trading session, historically, you would see just a little bit of a sell-off, not much. Let's say if it jumps from 101 to 110, Maybe it closes the day tomorrow at like 108. But the biggest move will come between the earnings report announcement and between the time the market is going to open. So in this type of circumstance, you would want to buy options ahead of the report and close them out in the morning after the report. So let's glance um, at the next one. Right, guys, we're not going to take a trade in that. It's here because, look, they're all in the same group. Um, if, ideally... When you want to trade with a coach tomorrow morning, they would tell you go with the LMT or RTX. Uh, you know, we're probably going to be getting into this RTX trade shortly here before uh, 4 p.m. ahead of the report on this one. Now, uh, DHR UPS guys, let's take a look at some of the charts here. Uh, DHR DHR should have flopped last one. This was a loser for us uh, during the last earnings report. Uh, we bought uh, some puts on the bounce and just for the weirdest fucking reason this thing just wouldn't uh, I mean see this was lost uh, earnings report it pumped it, it had a nice drop but not enough of a drop for us to make like any crazy money and depending on your entry here you might have even lost some so uh, basically uh, at this point it's a very well defined top okay um, it really it really is going to boil down, okay, whether it's going to break this level of 220. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 230. If it's going to break a level of 230, we got possibilities of this thing going all the way down to 215, 210. So potentially it could be a trade. I wouldn't trade it ahead of the earnings uh, by no means, but this would be something to keep an eye on tomorrow, depending on the levels. You can catch a nice trade on that. Um, MSCI. And now this one has been under a scrutiny of a short seller and nobody wanted to hear really anything because when he said, hey, uh, we're short the stock, look what happens. So the stock actually goes higher. Doesn't make them run, right? Sometimes an inexperienced trader will come and trade with 30 market moves, be like, whoa, we're buying puts on this. And the next thing, fucking the thing shoots up to the moon. And as an inexperienced trader, you're thinking, well, what the fuck? Why do we, why do we buy puts on this and not calls? Guys, just because you're right on something, it doesn't mean it's going to play into your hands every single time you put on the trade because sometimes the market is going to do something stupid like this, okay? And there's no reason in this case for SMCI after this short seller puts a big heavy position on it to do this. But it did that. But guess, uh, uh, you know, it's a short position through uh, stocks, so it, not options. I, I don't know if he's got options or not. He might have some options, but... At this point, as far as uh, his entry level that he announced, I mean, he's making money, but it took some time. So uh, just like the market's been going higher for like last five months and now it's been going down like besides today for like uh, 10 days straight, uh, practically. Uh, so something, sometimes market is going to have a major delayed decision uh, on what's actually uh, the real move. 
and we've had a fake move in the markets we had a fake move in smci i would stick with a short seller i think he will win this bet on the stock uh, now for a small account it's probably not an ideal stock because it's a bit pricey as far as options concerned but it is a solid trade it is a solid trade i think this shit will drop at least 20 points tomorrow so you can catch a nice and easy trade on this one um next one we've got phm phm let's take a look at phm phm is pulte homes uh you know we've uh, been very bearish we, we actually got uh one of the best trades last during season was on dhi uh, uh norton homes Do Do DHI is a ticker for, for another housing building stock. But on this one, guys, it's an absolute fucking short, okay? It's very well-defined head and the shoulder formation. I mean, all the crosses are here, everything you need for an easy uh, trade. So if it bounces first, you short it. Uh, if it drops and it gaps down, you short it. It's a fucking short. Uh, there's just end of story. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, Polaris, uh, P-I-I. Now, Polaris is a um, manufacturer of, like, uh, fun things that, uh, you know, uh, recreational activity stuff. So, considering that we are calling for weak consumer, not strong, you know, the whole market is holding up, still praying that with well, consumer is strong, the jobs are good. We, we know all these reports are fucking fake. So... The probability of this company announcing some kind of blowout quarter that nobody expects is like zero. Actually, it's probably like negative 10. So forget buying calls on this shit. It's going down. Uh, the question is by how much. So to make money, it's not just enough to know, okay, well, it's going to drop. Well, by how much? Because if it only drops a little, you're not going to make anything. So based off the history, I mean, this thing could move anywhere from 7 to 10 points. Uh, so you got to look at where options are priced and how they're priced. Uh, probably the stock could temporarily slow down at a price of 82. So there's a lot of considerations here. This is probably not going to be your 20, 30 X trade unless there's going to be a surprise to the downside. So picking up some options closer to the money just in case the move is not a surprise. You're not going to lose money, uh, but you're, you're not going to fucking make a killing either. So this is an easy trade. But unfortunately, unless there is a negative surprise, you're not going to make a killing. So uh, next one is going to be uh, Visa uh, announcing. Uh, hold on. We skipped UPS. One second, guys. Uh, UPS. Let's take a look at the UPS. This one could be a good moneymaker. Uh, we actually bought puts on UPS last earnings season, which was right here. We bought it right before 4 p.m. The next day, the stock drops. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't drop a ton. It looks like a huge move here, guys, but in reality, it wasn't a huge move. So um, it, it's like, look, on that move, uh, the way the options were priced, I mean, we only did like, I don't remember, on the first day, it was like maybe two, three X trade, that's it. Uh, on the second day, it was uh, if you held the puts that you bought here uh, for two days. Yeah, clearly you're like a 10 X uh, from where we we're buying them and stuff. But but it wasn't a huge trade. The one thing to consider that UPS can move big. OK, to the magnitude like this candle, 158 to 140 is like 12 points. So you got to take into consideration. OK, UPS trades now at 145, 146. If it was to make another 12 point move to the downside, OK, you got to make the decisions. OK, where the options are, how much could I be possibly making on this trade? So if the options are in the 140 strike, I don't know where they are uh, right this moment. I don't know, certainly where they're going to be when you're going to be getting to the straight but from the risk reward standpoint right you want to make sure you're at least targeting like a potential uh, four or five x trade or don't take it at all right so if the options in the 140 strike like you know uh two dollars and uh the uh move is like 12 bucks so which means it could drop to 138 then yeah you could probably pull off a a four x trade but if the options are like three or four dollars in the 140 strike then forget it at most maybe you can pull off like a 2x trade in that case it just doesn't make sense so um next one is um 
uh, Visa, Tesla, ENPH. All right, let's go and review those real quick. Visa, not normally a big mover around earnings. Uh, the chart is horrible. I mean, it's definitely uh, shortable, but very rare will you see Visa on, on, on an earnings report go lower. Very rarely, okay? But I think that moment could actually happen this time. It's just the problem is it doesn't drop a whole lot. So you can be bearish all you want on it, okay? They're gonna jerk, jerk you around with it. Probably gonna go sideways. They're gonna try to figure out the direction. I mean, plus minus seven to 10 points. I mean, it's not gonna get you paid big on this. So for that reason, stay away from it. I would stay away from the Tesla report as well, guys. Nothing, okay? So when we shorted it here, okay, uh, the video is there. December 31st, January 1st, we posted a bunch of videos. Actually, Tesla was on our top 10 short list. We said, look, we're short Tesla at 264. That's it. So now people want to fucking short it at 142. Fucking why? Okay, it's down half of its value in, you know, in three, in, in 90 days. Like, why do you want to short it now? Like, where the fuck have you been? Why didn't you take action on the video we posted at the very first day of, of trading uh, in 2024? We said, Tesla is dog shit, don't touch it. Uh, it's uh, the same as Boeing, right? They were trading at about the same price. Boeing actually reports earnings as well. I mean, it's at 170. I mean, at this point, even better off shorting Boeing than Tesla, right? Because Boeing still got some room and it doesn't matter what Boeing's going to say during the earnings report, it's going to drop, okay? There's nothing that Boeing can say. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's certain things it can say that could propel the drop all the way down to like 140s, 120s. I mean, it wouldn't be a shocker to me if Boeing was at like 90 bucks by the end of 2024. Um, so this one... I think it's a much easier short than Tesla. Uh, I, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure Tesla is going to drop. All right, look, it's not an issue whether Tesla is going to drop or not, but uh, it's going to be an issue again. Of it has dropped so much already. So can it can it hit a hundred after the earnings report? Sure, it can. But look where the options are going to be priced. So even if it, but let's say since it come down so much already ahead of the earnings report for you to expect another huge drop to like 40 points it's you know it's a low probability can it do it sure but like going with 140 puts they're going to be way overpriced going with 130 puts they're going to be way overpriced and even if it drops 10 points like what are you going to make nothing okay you're not going to make shit so you know just maybe if you get lucky you're gonna double your money but so the direction is clear in tesla right they're gonna drop it but you know focusing on probably uh a directional trade at this moment to to get the options pricing where the trade could work in your favor wouldn't be on the put side let's say it flushes down to 110 or some shit like that it's gonna bounce so while everyone is buying puts, that would be a moment to buy some calls because it can make a temporary bounce at certain levels. So that would be a much easier trade to try to go and catch the options when they're mispriced. Not when it's clear to everyone, oh, Tesla's going to fucking drop. That's not when you buy put options. You buy put options right here and go rewatch those videos because they're there, guys. In the beginning of the year, I don't know how many videos we, we posted about Tesla. It's going to be one of the worst performing stocks this year. But everybody just now comes to this conclusion. Now, the great thing is this for you, right? If, if uh, everyone's just finally coming to realization it's inflation, it's 1974, it's not 1999, it's, uh, you know, it, and so we've been right on all of these things. Well, that means also that we're going to be right on the direction of the market overall. So Tesla is already slashed in half. Well, the market still trades pretty close. I mean, we're, we're within 100, 200 points of all time highs. The market's got a ton of room for a drop. It's just this trade has not played out yet. Oh, it played out a couple of times for us really nicely. Uh, 160x uh, on Thursday, what was it, like three weeks ago, but um, it was this candle right here that we caught. But um, since then, the options jumped. It was impossible to make 160x on any one of these days. I mean, they were easy trades. But, you know, we predicted the market was going to drop five, six days in a row. It's now dropped a lot more than that in a row. But 
uh, the op it's all about options pricing guys right uh, and look guys uh, we could be reviewing freaking everything here the truth is there's just so much information and we got to get back to trading guys if you are interested in trading these earnings, uh, we got a ton of insight about a lot of these stocks, about the historic behavior, historic patterns, about initial reactions and how does the stock act during the first reaction, during the second, during, like, I can tell you, I can tell, take one stock and I can talk for 30 minutes about each one of these stocks in all the probabilities, gonna, you know, that could come out as a result of its historic uh, behavior. But it's, guys, it would be like a 10 hour video. So. I think I've covered enough to get you guys going for the next few days. But importantly, if you're trying, there is a 40, 50 X, a few trades within this list. And if you want to catch it, the best thing to do, guys, is to go to 13mmtv.com or 13marketmoves.com. Get in touch with a senior coach here and trade it. Options is not like to make money with options. Uh, you need to understand not only your entries and entries, entries and exits, you need to understand uh, whether you're, uh, which time of the day you're better to get in, which time frame you're best off to hold, uh, what strike price is actually gonna make money, what strike price is gonna make you a little bit, what strike price could actually put together the 40, 50 X trade. All of this information, okay, the same trader can take the same trade and, and, and double the money. The same trader who understands the trade and who understands the move, can go 40 50 x okay so there's a huge difference that's why the best way to do this guys trading weekly options ain't no joke okay especially if you got big fucking positions on uh, most of the people will have a heart attack so this is not for everyone but guys uh, for those of you that aspire to go like fucking 5k uh, to uh, 200k this week it's possible you, those of you aspire to go 50k to fucking a million dollars this week it's possible like look at all these opportunity here guys so we don't only have enough time to cover them in one video. So guys, there's some easy trades here on this list. Okay, just stop experimenting this shit on your own. Do it with someone who has done it time and time and time and time again. Do it with a 30 Market Moves Coach. Guys, big fucking week ahead. Let's roll.